they really tease you, right? They're like, could it be? Could it be? It is? Oh, it isn't. Oh, it is! You know, like... <laughs> Welcome to Rhythm Encounter episode 51. If uh, you've been listening to the show for a while, our last episode was technically 33, but we renumbered them, so don't worry, you're not missing anything. Um, 51 is basically the start of a new season for us. We've been on hiatus since about 2017. It's taken us a while to get everything you know, together again and ready to go, and part of that was because of our new uh, site transitioning over to a, a new system there we wanted to have that mostly out of the way which hopefully by the time this post is all behind us so now that we're we have that going we're established there we're bringing back this podcast that a lot of us at the site have really missed for several years and i know several of you have too so we figured one we got to bring the show back and if we're going to bring it back we should do it with a topic that a lot of us really, really care about. So our topic today is a composer focus. So today we're all about uh, Yasunori Mitsuda. Now, a lot of us know him from a few key things. Of course, he does the music for the Chrono games and a couple of the Xeno games and several others, but there's he has a long, long history of music. So we're gonna go with some really interesting places today. And it's not just me. I guess I should introduce my other hosts here. So along with me here, I have Hilary Andruff. Hi, everyone. Excited to be here on Rhythm. And we have one of our music editors, Chris Porter. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here and for bringing the really interesting songs you brought. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So if you haven't heard Rhythm listened in a while, if you're not sitting around just listening to our first, you know, 49 episodes over and over, most of our shows use a similar format where we have a topic and everyone on the show brings a few different songs and we'll listen to them in different blocks and then talk about them and our thoughts. So in this one we have, we're actually going to have three blocks of two songs each. So starting off block one, um, Hillary has our first pick of the day. I do. And I really, at least with my picks today, wanted to show the range of compositions that Mr. Mitsuda has done. So the first one I picked is slightly creepy, very atmospheric, and that is Coffin Fetish slash Blue Castle from the Shadow Hearts original soundtrack. Great. Okay, and then after that, we have one of Chris's selections. So what do you have for us? Uh, okay, so this is a track, uh, actually, similarly to uh, Hillary, uh, Hillary um, I wanted to kind of pick some tracks that maybe didn't quite sound like Mitsuda. Like something like, you know, you, you hear it, you're like, oh, I, that's got to be Mitsuda. This one, I don't think you would think that. Uh, so this one's actually called uh, Beautiful Day, and it's from the Armadine original soundtrack. Great. Okay, so now we're going to go listen to those, and we'll be back in a minute with some commentary. Thank you. 
So I want to give a little bit of context for, for my Shadow Hearts pick. Um, it's kind of a character slash place piece. Um, it plays in a castle when you meet one of your later party members in the first Shadow Hearts game, and he is a vampire, which the title kind of gives away a little bit. Um, but he's not a terrible vampire. He's helping the people in the town around him. So that's where Shadow Hearts kind of sets off its trope of interesting, kind of funny, off-kilter vampires. And that's part of the reason I picked it, because I had a really hard time picking a single track from Shadow Hearts. Mitsuda's contributions were all across the board. In the Shadow Hearts series, he did battle themes, he did a bunch of different stuff. And so I decided to go with something that was a little sparse and, like I said before, creepy. It, it almost had a Souls music kind of vibe to me as well, just with, with the background um, slightly flowy, faster pace, and the sparseness with the rest of the instrumentation. Um, and I also just really liked how they use the bell tolling to kind of punctuate the different movements of the song. So I think that covers my initial thoughts. What did you all think? Um, I just like the title. <laughs> no. Um, it's such a weird, strange title. I do, I do really like it. Like, there's more to it than just that, but the... Um, one of you help me out here. What's the instrument here? Is this a guitar? Is this something else that some other strange instrument I've never heard of? Well, it sounds like, like, there's like, the, like the strings. The harp is made like the main thing that you hear. And then you also hear a piano come in, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And they're doing like the flowy parts in the background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I, one of my notes, one of the words in my notes was pluckiness. I like the pluckiness. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It doesn't that... really describe the overall song very well, but it does have a nice like, you know, mellow vibe to it yeah well, that's the interesting that's the interesting thing about it is there is that sort of plucky through line but then you have that against a really sparse kind of creepy musical backdrop with some industrial sounds which is the other thing i wanted to mention it's got a slight industrial twinge to it as well which is yeah, which is true. so like at home on the, on the shadow hearts soundtrack because like yoshi yep. Yorota just is like an industrial god i mean <laughs> he really is <laughs> So it's kind of cool to see Mitsuda playing to some other composer's strengths, and I think I, I had notes to that effect with one of these other pieces here, too. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, and, and also another key instrument in this track is the uh, the fretless bass, which Mitsuda is just, that's, it's such a key part of his sound, and the way he uses it here reminds me of, like, uh, like Chrono Cross, um, like Isle of the Damned, like, just has that vibe for it. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get that little, like, funky part in the middle. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Um, so it's interesting, Hillary, because you were saying, like, you were giving context to the piece, and I'm like, man, I never played Shadow Hearts. Um, <laughs> you, you know, it was one of those games, I never I never owned a PS2, like, back in the day, uh, so mm -hmm. I just missed it, you know? Um, it didn't stop me from buying the soundtrack, because that's 95% of the, the VGM I listen to is from games I've never played. Who has time, right? But <laughs> but it was nice to hear the context, though, because I never knew it. Yeah. I don't really have any context for our next song because um half of my notes for this okay not half but uh was that i've never even heard of this game i, I don't know it, it kind of passed me by i guess i know it didn't come out here but yeah i don't think it was ever uh, reported uh anywhere i think it was just a japan only release possibly somewhere else in asia but i really don't know um yeah like i said before like i i've never played this I, it's one of those uh, it, it, for me, because Mitsuda is my favorite composer, if it's a Mitsuda soundtrack, I buy it. I, it doesn't matter like where it came from, what mm. game it's from. It could be, it could even be from a series I absolutely loathe, which that doesn't exist. There's no like uh, series that Mitsuda composed for that I loathe. But if that ever happened, I'd still buy the soundtrack, right? It's, it's, it's <laughs> right, yeah. right. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't know much about Armadine. I think it's like, um, like a strategy kind of like military strategy type game. 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. looked SRPG. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so are, are we going to talk about Beautiful Day then? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go for it. Okay, so this this track I remember specifically like the first time I heard it. I'm just like, what is this? And I and I quickly like checked the booklet. I'm like, is this Mitsuda? Like, I, I know this is, like, his soundtrack, but he, surely he, he had a guest composer for this one. Uh, no, I mean, it's Mitsuda. And, like, I don't know, there's something so unique about it and so, like, out of character for him. But then, like, the more I listen to it, I'm like, no. I mean, obviously he's capable of, of writing something so unique to his style. Um, and then, uh, so, Hillary, you said that you researched something about this track. What, what did you find out? I did. So one of the things I found out about Beautiful Day is he's credited as playing the guitar, which is really neat. Yeah, because he he often, um, you know, hires musicians to to play for him. But yeah, like, I think he's a pretty good uh, guitar player, uh, basoki player. And when he plays live, he he often um, does like simple keyboard stuff and, and simple like auxiliary percussion. So yeah, he performs sometimes. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I already had a really high opinion of him anyway, but I wasn't sure how much of the, you know, how much he often plays, yeah. let alone, like, here on this soundtrack for this game I've never heard of, right. which is really great. Like, I, I didn't actually listen to anything else on this soundtrack yet, but I definitely want to check it out now. Oh, uh, yeah, highly because recommend. Two this discs. one's really, really pretty. Yeah. Uh, and, and like I said, everything else on this, on the soundtrack, sounds nothing like this song. <laughs> like, this is a very, very, like, it's an outlier, but it's, like, it's so good to me. Uh, but yeah, awesome. the whole soundtrack is very cool. Yeah, one thing it shares um, in common with the Chrono Cross soundtrack, I think, is it's just something I would play on vacation. It's just got a very sure. relaxing vibe, and I love I love the the beat and the percussion to it. Yeah, I like the repeated notes when the melody starts on the guitar. Yeah. There's just a little bit of like a delay that do 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 do. Yep, yep. It, 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 which it, is fun. It catches you off guard, right? Because you like you're, yeah. you're trying to follow along, and you're like. I think I know where, when that weird d -d -d starts, but like you actually don't. Like it kind of. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, but it keeps you engaged. Oh, yeah. It's really neat. Yeah, very very cool track. Very well composed, and um, I don't know. I think he took he took some chances with it, and then it paid off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. What what's the uh, what's the rest of the soundtrack like then? Um, it's it's a mix. Uh, you'll hear kind of gun hazardy stuff. Um, You'll hear some. Uh, there's a there's a wide range of music. There's some kind of more militaristic like battle themes. There's some really really beautiful like string work and and um, yeah, hard to describe. It's, it's it's a lot of music. There's two discs of, of tracks. So yeah. So to the listeners, I mean, like we when you introduce the show, you know, Mitsu is known for Xenogears and Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger mainly. You know, but he's got so much stuff out there that that a lot of people. Um, like this game Armadine because it was never ported uh, overseas. I I'm sure a lot of people have never heard of the game, and so unless they're like a diehard Mitsuda fan or a diehard BGM fan, they probably never even thought to look up, you know, oh, what else has Mitsuda done? But I highly recommend doing it. You'll find a lot of hidden gems, uh, like in his in his discography. Yeah. Treasure hunt. <laughs> we, uh, one thing we're doing, actually now, we always link to reviews and VGM DB listings before on Rhythm Encounter, but one thing I'm going to start doing now in our show notes is also listing places you can buy or stream music Perfect. when possible. And of course, I, there's nothing for this. Yeah. Like, I assume it's been out of print for ages, so I tried. If you look at our show notes, you'll find a listing on VGM DB. So somehow or another, I want to listen to more of it, but it doesn't look like there's any way to actually buy it at the moment. I can, uh, I'll look up after the show and see if, um, if there's still stock, because it's it was actually put out by Sleigh Bells, which is Mitsuda's own. Oh, okay. Label. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, so I, I, he might have stock still. I mean, it's an old album. You know, it's been out for a long, long time. But uh, he, might, sure. he might actually still have copies of the CD that you could that you could import. Well, cool. Well, then maybe I'll have to take all of this out of the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right. Well, so that was our our gradual introduction to this episode, and now we have to um, decidedly more upbeat or epic songs in the middle here. So the next block is going to start with, ooh, one of my choices. So if anyone didn't follow the lengthy development cycle and everything that went on with Final Fantasy XV and all of its DLC and merchandise and books and anime and 
whatever else I'm forgetting. Jewelry. <laughs> anyway, so all the DLC episodes of Final Fantasy XV, each one had a guest composer. And episode Ignis, I was very excited, was Mitsuda. And some other people too, but he's the main guest composer. So I have the main theme of Final Fantasy XV episode Ignis coming up next. And then after that is Chris's other pick. Uh, yep, so for my other pick, it's from a mobile game. Um, I think iOS and Android. Uh, the Japanese title was Revolvers 8, spelled kind of weirdly with like R-E colon Revolvers 8. And then uh, the Western retitling of it was just Revolve 8. Uh, but anyway, so uh, <laughs> as usual, never played this game. Um, I've seen some gameplay videos of it, uh, but it doesn't really look like my thing. But again... So Prokeon Studios did the soundtrack for this one, um, and this is called To the Top, A New Beginning. And this one, this one, let me see this. Great. Yeah, so we, we have a super high budget game that everyone's heard of, and then one that a lot of people might not have heard of. It's a good mix. So let's give a listen, and then we'll talk about them after.
Yeah, uh, episode Ignis. I, I wish I could talk about the, the DLC itself. I have not actually played it yet. But overall, the the volume two of Final Fantasy XV is just, there's a lot of really great surprising stuff on there. So it really is all worth listening to, but we're not talking about those other composers today. We are talking about arguably the best character in the game with one of my favorite composers. What I think is interesting about this, and I think it's more or less true about a lot of the Volume 2 soundtrack, is you definitely get a sense of each of the composers. Like, there is some stuff here that feels Mitsuda, whatever that means. I don't know how to describe that besides that maybe it's the strings. There are certain parts of it that remind me of things like maybe parts of Chrono Cross and some other notable songs. But I feel like this, and especially some other ones on the soundtrack, like, they're still somehow they still somehow fit with the rest of 15. Yeah. Like it is yes, this is Mitsuda and the other composers that are here but and it's their own thing but somehow it's still cohesive with Shimomura and everyone else who contributed and I don't know how that happens. Yeah. I, I don't know how any of these people can do this and bring their own touch to it but it still fits and doesn't feel out of place. Yeah. It's just incredible. I think that's a testament to to how well researched uh you know, Mitsuda is in terms of like the world of 15 and, and Ignis in particular. Um, I can't remember exactly where I heard this or read it, but it was some interview with him. And he said, he said something like, I, I think I spent more time like getting to know Ignis as a character than I did actually composing music. So like he spent like all this time, like trying to understand the world and the character and then get, finally dove into the music. And I think that's why it feels so organic. It's just, it's such, it's like, of course this is what Ignis theme sounds like. You know what I mean? It, it just seems so like obvious because it's so well made. Wow. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say I'm not really surprised, but I didn't know that. I didn't know he got like that into the character in the game. That probably explains a lot. It's really neat. One of the things I was going to say about it is I was going to comment on Mitsuda's skill at composing something that fits so well into the world of Final Fantasy. Right. Um, and so that goes right along with that mode of thought. Just there's so many like specific touches in the song and just the general sound as well that re remind me of a Final Fantasy game. I have notes about there's a moment where the brass takes over the melody and the strings start doing just kind of sharp staccato in the background yeah. that reminded me of yep. 8. Yes. Um, and some low runs and just kind of the clashing percussion too. And he really got those touches, but it's still... It, you can still feel his fingerprint on it oh, too yeah, so sure. it's right it's neat yeah actually i never even thought about that until you mentioned it a little earlier today that you had some a little bit of uh final fantasy 8 vibes there which I guess like yes those are there which i didn't really hone in on it i guess maybe subconsciously i i heard it but i didn't think about it until you brought that up yeah, I mean, you have, you you know, even even though, uh, you know, Uematsu wasn't responsible for 15's music, it, you know, Final Fantasy, it's still his legacy. It's still his musical legacy. And you you almost like have to respect it uh, as <laughs> yes. coming into the into the series. So mm -hmm. I, I think that when you do hear stuff like that, I think it's very intentional and almost like unavoidable for the composers. They're just like, OK, you have this. Oh, yeah. In this huge body of Uematsu's work and, um, you know, the, the legacy of Final Fantasy's music, and uh, even with with new composers, I think you still hear hints of them kind of honoring him. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's pretty masterfully done. I think so. And and, and and the main melody itself is just it's exquisite, isn't it? I mean, the like, mm -hmm. main theme, like that that melody you hear, is just like, oh, it's just got such a life of its own. And oh, it does. And then you know, then it that carries through the rest of that, you know, part of the soundtrack right, too. Right. Like you'll hear it in other oh, yeah, yeah. Sound, brings it back. songs too. Yeah. Yep. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the violin performance oh, right there gosh. too. Really oh, yeah. good violin performance. So emotional. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, I think that you could probably pull it off somewhat with, with a virtual violinist, but I'm so glad they went all out and then hired whoever they did. Cause mm -hmm. yeah, it, it just, the performance is just heart wrenching. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely fits the character. I mean, I don't know what he goes through in that DLC, but I know what he goes through in the main game, yeah. so it definitely fits the character. Mm -hmm. Switching over to another game, um, I'm just, I have just a few notes here. I'll let you guys... Sure. You'll probably have more to say about it than me, but I'll say this. 
uh, from the album art, because of course I hadn't heard of this game. I, I'm not sure what I expected this song to be, but it I don't think it was this. <laughs> and I, I looked up the game a little bit too, and it, I guess it came out here. It was actually brought out in was, English, yeah. and yeah. and it's already gone. Like it it was released here, and then they shut it down sometime last year. Right. So I I'm not sure it was my kind of game either. Yeah. And even the music I heard kind of feels like okay, that's what I expect from a whatever it is some kind of some sort battle of battle royale strategy game i think strategy I, defense i'm not sure exactly but like and the music is like all right it, it's it's you know it's fine like it fits that and i'm not sure how this song fits in exactly right. um i don't really care because it's so good <laughs> um, um so you know we can't go play the game anymore but at least we have this and i think i think he did a few songs on the soundtrack uh me too did three yeah this okay so a little bit of details that I know about this soundtrack was um, Prokyon Studios is Mitsuda's studio. Uh, they handle quite a few soundtracks, uh, many of which Mitsuda has no compositional part in. Um, but sometimes he will. He'll just like contribute a couple tracks to, to one of them. Uh, most of this soundtrack was uh, Shinsuke Tsuch uh, Tsuchiya and then uh, also the other in-house composer, Mariam Ab Abunasser. I, I've never known how to pronounce her last name. Um, but those are like the two key like in-house composers at his studio. Uh, but yeah, Shinsuke Tsuchiya did most of this music. Marian Abenos Abenoser did uh, a couple tracks, and then Mitsuda did three. Uh, and, and like you said, Mike, um, this this track doesn't really sound like most of the other soundtrack. The rest of the soundtrack is I, I actually really love it. I, I think the soundtrack is is, is quite remarkable. Um, but yeah, this is an outlier again, just like my Beautiful Day pick. Uh, it just <laughs> it stands out for a different reason, though. Beautiful Day stood out because it was so, like, not Mitsuda, and so just, like, the arrangement is so strange, and and um, but, like, in a very cool way. This one stands out because it's so beautiful and, and just, like, grand, and um, yeah, in stark contrast to the rest of the soundtrack, which is kind of, like, hip, I guess, like you'd say. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but but again, uh, similar to the Ignis theme, the the main melody you hear in this is just it's so good and, and like it just speaks to you and it's so characterful. Yeah, grand is definitely the right word. And one actually hearing these two right next to each other, I'm kind of struck. They they have a lot of similarities, yes. and it's really cool. Yes. Wow, who put together the the order of tracks in this? I know. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> we got our two like grand violiny, clashy. Yes. I mean, this together. I'll take credit for putting them together, but it, it <laughs> is really lucky that they happen to be here. Right. Yeah. Chris brought we this one in. Talk about like what we were picking. We all just did this independently. And then afterwards, we're like, whoa, these actually fit together. Yeah. <laughs> these all. But yeah, here. you're right. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting that you you say the rest of the soundtrack is kind of hip because that is not what I would have pictured either. No, no. You'll have to you'll have to give it a listen if you get now this one is actually available like it's on iTunes like even even in the US I think um, it, I think it's, we saw it on Spotify too yeah yeah, yeah I think it's... I think they like actually released this one I mean which is awesome <laughs> uh, it's a it's a Sega game I mean if that if that helps I think I don't, I don't know if Sega's been um, releasing their stuff more recently because I know a lot of companies like Konami and and Falcom they're they've been kind of putting their stuff up on Spotify and I don't know if Sega's been doing that but. Sega's been pretty good about it. Um, well, okay. I, I don't know how far it goes, but I, I know a lot of their bigger games. Like, there's a lot of Dreamcast games. I know Crazy Taxi. I feel like Jet Set Radio. Okay. Skies of Arcadia is definitely on iTunes and nice. I think everywhere else, too. So they have some stuff out there. Okay. They've definitely expanded their repertoire. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, the last thing I want to mention are those those vocals at the beginning. Yes, yes. That also, they're awesome. But they also remind me a, a lot of Shadow Hearts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting too, like between Ignis and, and this theme from Revolve 8, uh, they, they both make use of kind of um, like a vocally intro, but like totally yep. different styles, right? One's like this yeah. um, kind of like a solo female vocalist that's that's very um, world, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what to, does it, yeah. I don't know what region that style of vocal comes from, but yeah. Uh, and then compared to the Ignis theme, which is just this like grand choir. Um, which is really funny because I'm looking at the cover for Revolve 8 right now yeah. and it's two somewhat regal looking ladies right. like <laughs> kind of growling at each other and I'm like, yep, those vocals fit that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true. That's true. 
All right, yeah, that cover is pretty cool. Oh, you know what? Look, yeah. it, actually, uh, the the soundtrack was released by Sleigh Bells. That was Mitsuda's label. So it was a Sega game, but but Mitsuda looks like he held on to the rights to the music and, and did it himself. Oh, oh great. Right. Good on him. Man, He's. I, I wish that he would release his entire back catalog. You know, everything that he has the rights to, I, I think that should be out there. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, someday. I'd be all for it. I mean, that. I already yeah. own all of it, of course, on CD. You guys know me, but <laughs> for, for everybody else. <laughs> well, yes, yes. <laughs> all right. So we're two-thirds through now. So we have we have two more songs today, not counting, you know, maybe there's a bonus track really? at the end of this. What could it be? I don't know. <laughs> So the first song of our last block is something Hillary brought, which I know you were really excited to bring on here. I am, because one thing that you've got to talk about if you're talking about Mitsuda is his love of Celtic music. Yes. So my second pick was a collaboration he did with um, a national Irish choral group, Anuna, very famous in their own right, for... Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and that song is called Shadow of the Lowlands, and it's just lovely mixed male-female vocal choral piece. Yeah, well, I'm excited to hear that, as if I haven't already listened to it three <laughs> times today. You can be excited to hear it, even if you've already heard it. I am. Yes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm excited for everyone else to hear it yeah. if they haven't heard it yet. All right, and then the last track, and... I'll save most of my commentary for after, but, you know, I think we, we all exercise a lot of restraint and also wanting to bring in something unique here that we didn't, we didn't bring Chrono stuff on because one, it's been on the show a lot and, you know, it's great, but it's good getting some more variety here. But at the same time, I feel like <laughs> if we're not going to have Chrono, we at least have to have a Xenogear song on here. Yeah. And we featured, I think... We actually have a list of every song that's been on Rhythm Encounter. I think we've had four or five Xeno Gears, but never anything from Creed, which is very strange to me. So I brought Creed from the Xeno Gears Creed Arrange album from way back in the day. Yeah. It's a nice throwback. Yeah. So we're ending on two Xeno songs, actually. From 98. Which I'm just now realizing I paired up. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so let's go listen to the Xeno stuff and then talk about it in a bit. Here we stand as one. 
So yes, Shadow of the Lowlands, very mellow, very, very beautiful. I picked it because I think it shows Mitsuda having a deep knowledge of a range of different types of Celtic music. Um, this is mostly vocals and it's just, there's a beautiful kind of pulse running through it with the female voices at first. They kind of create a pulse and you have some great complex vocal harmonies that blend really well throughout the whole thing. So I really, and I think he plays to Anuna's strengths in it, honestly, Absolutely. throughout the composition. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're they're very famous. This, And this almost sounds like something they could have done on their own. Yeah, he he it, wrote it for them. I mean, this is... Yeah, this sort of very thing. clearly. <laughs> it, you know, it was a, a dream of, of Mitsuda's for decades to, to find to work with them because he's admired them for so long and this was like a dream come true for him and uh i mean he is such a home run with all the tracks for, from this game that he arranged uh, for them mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point to bring up too is this is not the only one of these that i could have picked yeah. there are a few others on the album too so if you like this one there's more there in the xenoblade chronicles 2 soundtrack and it, it's it's interesting also to contrast this one with creed because it's a slightly different Celtic style where you've got the complex pipe playing with some vocals. Yeah. I, I, I'd remarked off air that I, I think it's interesting that, and you know, you can feel free to semi-correct me like you did there too, where I, where I was saying like, this is very, it's not the kind of vocals that you're used to hearing in a lot of games. Like when you think of like a male vocal or choir or anything like that in a video game, it's really easy to think of something like Final Fantasy VII, or that—that's usually that's a lot of the kind of male vocals you get. Right. Like this style is very, I think, rare in yeah. video games, mm -hmm. but not for them. Right. Yeah. As like a group. The choral. Yeah. Usually, when I think of vocal music in video games, you know, either ominous male choir, <laughs> yeah. or, or like female vocal track that can be kind of pretty or poppy or something like that. Yeah, it's very, very different from what a lot, or a lot of what's out there, and it's, I think, one of its definite strengths. Yeah, where you ha uh, Michael McGlynn is, like, the leader of, of Anuna, and, and, you know, his voice gets, like, front and center in this arrangement a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and you had mentioned the, the complex harmonies and how they just, they just, like, lift his voice up. Yeah. It, it makes it gives the song just a truly really nice build and i know when we were talking and listening together we were sort of like wait we just have to listen because there's so many points yeah. where they lift that voice and it just creates moments where you have to pause and listen it builds so well yeah it's uh, we, we were I'll, I'll mention this just you can cut it out if you want to <laughs> i'll mention um you know it would be very nice to have uh to be able to listen to this in real time and react in real time uh because there's certain moments in this in this track the the anuna track where it's just like the, the harmonies are just unreal you're just like oh i cannot believe that just happened like how did you how did you write that how did you think to to do that um and there, there's several moments in that that just give me chills it, this is absolutely gorgeous piece oh absolutely oh yes okay i guess i could talk about my song uh, you know, one thing I, I noticed, these don't have a lot to do with the the song itself, but when I was looking up links for our show notes, I I was looking up the VGMDB listing for this, and this is apparently the fifth album ever added to VGMDB, Great. which it's tells awesome. you how long they've been around, too. Yeah. Um, and then for me, I, I was just curious because, I you know, I've had this. This album was from, oh, shoot, I lost already. 98. 1998. And I'm thinking back on like how long I've been actually like listening to music, you know, on my computer, and and I realized I had this for a while. So I, I looked up my iTunes, and apparently I've never re-ripped the song since then. So I've had this in my iTunes since 2007. Nice. <laughs> nice. It was encoded with iTunes version four. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what version we're at now, but boy, I've had this song for a long time. At, at least like 11 or 12, I think. Yeah. So yeah, I have. I have been listening to this album on and off for many, many years. Yes. And, and you know, I, I'm never tired of it. This is a CD I had in my car in the early 2000s yeah. <laughs> pretty much all the time. Yep. 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 Really good for traveling. <laughs> it's, I, uh... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I have, the, I have the, the same CD still. You know, I've never gotten rid of it. Um, exactly. And it's been with me for many years. Oh. Yeah. 
another interesting thing between the two that I just thought of is I, I think it's it's pretty cool that um, Shadow of the Lowlands is actually in English and then Creed is in Mitsuda Gaelic. actually wrote some lyrics in Japanese originally and it got translated to Gaelic right. if I'm understanding right. correctly. Wow. I did not know that until today. And they're very, from what I could gather, they were very Xeno-appropriate lyrics. Um, let's see. About two separate pieces, two separate people calling out to each other and searching yeah. for each other. That's very, that, that harkens back to Xeno years, right? I yep. Spoil, yeah, yeah. But even, even back then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, there, there's been some other albums. There was a, was it last year we had like the revival disc of xeno gears right. the blu-ray version which i think made some musical changes but it's mostly the same which is fine it was basically just and a then, remastering but they actually did yeah they, anuna actually appeared on that though right there was some there was some brand new arrangements of xeno gears tracks with anuna which was quite a quite a treat. I, I think that's yeah i think that started the anuna train <laughs> okay okay well shoot i haven't actually heard those particular tracks so maybe this kind of ruins what I was about to say here, but but there was that, and then there was several years ago, there was the Myth arrangement album. Ah, yes. Myth yeah. was great. Also, also good. I think the problem was, at least for me, like, that was really good. It's kind of like the the. I'm sorry to say this, like the, the Chrono um, Orchestra soundtrack from last year. Great. It's fantastic, but the year prior, there was that vocal album, which is so dear to me like so like i like the myth zeniger's album i think it's great but i already had creed in my life right right and there's room for both i know there's room for both they don't actually have to compete with each other but i know i just i agree i completely agree uh with your assessment i think that both games i think the smaller ensemble arrangement in xenogear's case Creed, better than myth and in Chrono Cross's case, I think that the one that was just released, the live performance from the Chrono Cross tour, the 20th anniversary tour, uh, far better than the orchestral album by many, many leagues. I mean, oh, I haven't heard that one yet. I really want to. It's on my list. I got to see it live, man, in Osaka. <gasps> oh, oh, man. So good. And you know, I bought that uh, the digital release when it finally came out. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The meat suited dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've looked for it, I think, unless it's changed in the last, like, week or two, but I think it's only available digital, it's only digital and only in Japan. Is it still only in reason. Japan? I don't know, I mean, that that's, the last time I looked, that's what it was. Okay. I, um, would, I would absolutely not, buy it if it yeah, was... Yeah, they better yeah. release it worldwide. I mean, it's Chrono Cross, it's like, everybody would hope so. That up. Oh, yeah. I would buy it right now. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up, no. Um... <laughs> Anyway, yeah, it's so the whole album is is beautiful. It's I had a really hard time actually choosing which one. Um, I also I like that the two vocal themes that we usually hear in English from Xeno Gears. There are Japanese versions yeah. on this album, yeah. which are great. Strange um, not hearing uh, Joanne Hogg's voice though, right? Because you're so used to, to yes. that. But uh, it is cool having uh, another version of them, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, it was between that. I think I had this and Balto and June Mermaid. Oh man! And one other one. So yeah. So I had like it's what ten, eleven tracks, and I think I narrowed it down to like five. <laughs> right. It, it was re really difficult to just pick one, but I, I think this was the one to do because I think because of the oh shoot, what is it? The elbow pipes. Ah yes, the elbow uh, pipes. It's those pipes, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Elbow pipes. When those came in, I, I got all excited just because they work so well with the vocals in the background in this track in particular, but also because if Cree has a signature instrument, that is probably it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It definitely, definitely steals the show when they come in. And and I, I think that the, the way they're used in this album, I, there's a lot of people that don't like the sound of like Celtic pipes, right? They, they, they mm -hmm. think it's grating or something. I think that you convert people to it by having them hear it on this album. It's, I, I can't think of a single person to be like, oh, no, that sounds awful. Right? right. It's, it's so true. well used in this album. It's a pipe integrated really well with a bunch of really other instruments well. throughout, which is great. And I think it also is an interesting side note that these Ilium pipes are basically the, like, quieter, more polite version of pipes that are used in Celtic right. music. 
It and is. they have the best range and a slightly better timber that does work well with other right. instruments. Yeah. I love just describing them as more polite bagpipes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, like, because bagpipes are just so rude, you know. <laughs> I, I'm just imagining like a, a guy in a in a kilt standing outside your window and like playing the bagpipes, and you yell at him, but then he switches to the Ilian pipes, and he's like, "Oh no, I guess that's okay. It's more this polite. Is, this is great." <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, I guess I guess visually now I'm, I I can picture someone like barging into your room with bagpipes, but not so much with these ones. <laughs> You know, they'll like knock first and be like, hey, you want me to play some of this? And we're like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You, you were really, you weren't rude about it like that bad, bad, bad. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even imagine he'd say anything. He would just kind of like, no. kind of hit, he'd go, huh, huh, huh? And then start playing. <laughs> I mean, bagpipe guy just wants to scare his foes on the battlefield, all right? True, true. I, I guess you got, yeah, when you think about it like that, that's how else can you do it if you're not going in, like, all in for it? Uh, like, hey, I'm here. Yep. But, yeah, really cool pipes with a bunch of other instruments on Creed. Yeah. Uh, but, like, in this in this track in particular, though, it's it's really remarkable how well uh, a, a, a female voice and the alien pipes, like, blend. Like, yeah. and, and he's he's so busy, right? The alien pipe player. Mm -hmm. so oh yeah. Many notes. <laughs> and it's like it never clashes. And it's like, how is this happening? Like, if I was right. composing this, I would be clashing all the time because I'm not Mitsuda. But you know, <laughs> it's like, but who you know, is? Job. Oh, yeah, I wanted to that's say something, true. Uh, Mike, when you were when you were saying June Mermaid, uh, that's the unofficial title of of that track, and I still call it June Mermaid, but. The reason it's called June Mermaid is from somebody mistranslating it like 20 years ago. It's actually October Mermaid. Oh, shoot. I've heard that. And, and so let me explain totally how forgot. this happened. So, well, remember, I, I ripped this in 2007. Okay. Right. So. No, 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 literally, I, I still call it June Mermaid, even though I know it's called October Mermaid, if you translate it correctly, because it's uh -huh. just that's what it is. That's what I've known it to be called forever, right? Uh, even though it's a mistranslation. So, uh, the reason that happened, I know we're talking about not this particular track anymore but we're still talking about xenogear so i think it's okay um so normally uh june in japanese would be like rokugatsu it's just like six and then gatsu which means like month uh but in this particular track they use an old naming convention for for a month right so october mm. in this old convention is is kaminazuki or or uh, kan natsuki right and somebody didn't know or like they just like looked it up wrong and they thought it meant June and not and not the tenth month. Oh wow! So then they oh, just so one person probably on VGMDB right they probably like mistranslated it and that's what everybody called it and it spread all across the world and then somebody was like hey wait a second they looked back at the original Japanese they're like wait a second that's not the sixth month that's the tenth month you know so it's actually October Mermaid. Uh, so it's sort of like. Oh, go ahead, I was gonna say it's, it'll, it'll always be June, June Mermaid in my in my heart but. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. It's sort of like how in English, you know, October is not the eighth month, and because the, the calendar's changed over time. Oh, because oh, of the yeah. yeah, yeah, strange, huh? Wow. Okay, I didn't know that. I gotta go fix my track. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a fun episode. I yeah. think that was a great way of uh, reintroducing rhythm encounter to everyone. So I thank you both for being here with me for that. Thank you thank for you. having us. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. All right. So I have some some closing stuff to cover. And then one tradition we definitely are keeping with is that our guest, although technically you're both guests today, because I don't have an official permanent co-host yet, but one of our guests each episode is going to bring on a bonus track. So we are going to completely close out the episode with something from Chris that even as of now, none of us know what it is yet. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about the next episode. So one thing you might have noticed is this is slightly shorter than past Rhythm Encounters, and that's because we wanted like to actually put episodes out at a regular pace again. And, you know, when we were doing, you know, two, three, I think even sometimes four hour episodes, that took way too long to edit. It was a lot to listen to, and we just we couldn't keep up with the schedule. So we're going to stick with that now. And the, the plan is that we're going to release episodes every two weeks now. So not as much as Retro Encounter. I, I can't keep up with Solosi. But I, I'm, I'm going to do my best, and we're going to try to do every two weeks, which is why we record everything way in advance. 
So about two weeks after you hear this, we should be hearing episode 52. And episode 52 is going to be about Undertale. Because it occurred to us that Undertale this year is five years old. So it was time to do an Undertale episode. So look forward to that. Um, if you have, you know, thoughts on the show, uh, feedback, topic suggestions, whatever you want to say, um, you can reach us, the show, at music at rpgfan.com. Um, and remember the, the track list and places to buy and stream all of the music you heard today will be in the show notes, both in your podcast app and on rpgfan.com. So for the two of you, uh, Chris and Hillary, how can people reach you if they want to talk to you about music or elbow pipes or <laughs> anything else? Um, I'll go first. Uh, so RPG Fan email is good, Hillary A at RPGfan.com, or I'm also EP Fire on Discord. Great. Uh, for me, Twitter is probably the best one. Um, so it's at C Porter Music. That's definitely the best Great. one. Oh, and then me, well, I don't know. I'm technically on some social media, but at this point, the easiest way to get me would also be email, which is just Mike at RPGfan.com. So if, if this is your first introduction to either RPG Fan or our podcasts, I also want to give a quick shout out to our other shows. When you're done listening here, make sure you go check out Random Encounter. That's our general RPG podcast that, that comes out about every two weeks and we talk about basically what people are playing. Sometimes it's new games, current games, sometimes old games. And of course, Retro Encounter, which I, I really don't know how to describe Retro Encounter anymore because it's sort of retro games. It's usually retro games. They do a game journal every month where people come together and play through a particular game. And then in between those episodes is really whatever people feel like. But it's a fun time and there's a new episode every week. And then the last thing I'm going to say here is if you enjoyed this episode, uh, we would definitely appreciate it if you tell people about it. You know, say say that our show is back. And if you can, like, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you want to. Um, leave us a review because, you know, for some reason that, that helps us out. Uh, reviews and subscriptions definitely help, uh, you know, help our visibility and, and all those podcast directories. So if uh, if you would be so kind to do that, we would definitely appreciate it. And all that said now, we're going to close out our show with a surprise here from Chris. So what do you have for us? Uh, okay, so for the, the surprise track, I picked one that um, it's a very, very special track. Uh, I, I'm going to assume that most people have never heard this. Uh, Die Hard Mitsuda fans, I'm sure they have. It's not from a game. It's not from an officially released soundtrack. Uh, not even really an officially released album, but it did officially come from Mitsuda. So uh, maybe some, some diehard fans can guess where I'm going with this. But um, so in the early 2000s, I think between about 2000 and 2004, uh, Mitsuda had a fan club called Hopeful Weeds. And um, I, I'm not sure what all the benefits were of it. I, I'm sure you had access to certain things, but uh, about once a year, he would send his subscribers or his uh, his fan club members a cd with with music on it um this ranged from original music uh to arrangements from from his soundtrack so there's like beautiful arrangements of, like chrono cross music on one of the volumes um i think the last volume had like select tracks from uh deep labyrinth which is like huh. a, a really kind of obscure um like mobile game that he did the soundtrack to uh but for this particular one it's from uh the volume two disc Hopeful Weeds Volume 2 from the year 2001. And wow. there's a track on it called Primitive Heart. And it's an original composition. It's not part of any game. And it was never released outside of just this obscure fan club disc only. Um, of course, it found its way online, as, as things tend to do. But if you don't know to look for it, you don't know about it, right? So it's, it is available if you know, if you know how to look. But uh, yeah, so uh, this track is absolutely stunning it's it puts me in such a good mood i remember just listening to this on a repeat in my in the early uh, in the early 2000s and um uh i used the song to convert uh, several of my friends to mitsuda fans so I, I hope that a lot of people have never heard this before and hope it's a cool experience for them to, to hear something so kind of obscure from from mitsuda great wow yeah i wasn't expecting that what was the name again uh primitive heart from primitive heart hopeful weeds volume two 
All right. So we're going to close out with the primitive heart. Uh, thank you both for being here. And thank you, know, you. please come back next time, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I like elbow pipes. Oh, that's so funny that you said that. <laughs> <laughs>